Hey everyone, Gary Simon of CourseSetcher.com. Today, we're going to look at Ionic 2 components, and really that's what makes Ionic 2 Ionic 2. Now there's about 30 of them, so instead of showing you how to do and implement each one of them, I'm gonna show you something more important, which is how to understand the API and the documentation that comes with it, along with the components. So that means we're going to look at just a few of them. I'll show you how to read the documentation, and then that way going forward, you'll be able to very easily implement these components on your own with your own projects based on your own project needs. All right, so this is the second lesson or the second clip it, uh, that's a part of the Ionic series, which is free at Corsetra.com. So check that out if you haven't, and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first to demonstrate how these components work, we wanna make sure that you have a new project created with the Ionic CLI. Now, if you're following along with this from the free Ionic course, then you already have a project set up from the previous lesson, you can just skip this step. Now, if not, you can refer to this video on how to install the Ionic CLI from the previous clip that's a part of this course. And then what you need to do is simply run this command in the console to start a new project, which would be Ionic start first project, the blank template and V2 for Ionic 2. Hit enter and let it run through and install. And because I already did this, I'm not going to run it. And I also have a project called first project. After it's done, CD first project, and then Ionic serve dash L for lab view. All right. so. We'll let this run through momentarily. It will launch a browser at default port 8100 as seen here. And it will serve our beginner project here just to demonstrate how components work. All right, and there we go. Now, earlier I did kind of just wipe clean the uh, template. That's so yours isn't going to say blank for now. It's gonna be whatever Ionic installs by default. So for the next step, what we wanna do is look at the documentation for Ionic 2. And you can access that at ionicframework.com forward slash docs. And on the left sidebar, you can see we have components right here. Now you can see if we go through there, it's quite a lengthy list of components that we can use. And there's about 28 in all. And really there's just two types of components here. Those are, are composed of just HTML and CSS, and they're really just for aesthetics and the UI, and we'll refer to those as template components. And there's about 20 of those. And then there's also those that are interactive and include dynamic functionality. So we'll call these dynamic components, and there's about eight of those. Now, in both of the cases, the documentation provides you with information on how to implement the component in the template through custom HTML elements and attributes that are designated for that particular component. Now, so for the purpose of simplicity, let's first take a look at a template component. Now, out of the 20 template components that I mentioned that don't have any associated controller with them, just three of them have no API documentation as well. So to give you an example, one of those three is cards. And the other two, the other two are grid and button. So let's look at cards right here. Now, when I mean that just these three have no API documentation, you'll see if we scroll through this, there's no link here to an API page. Whereas if we click on something like toast, for example, we see for more information, check out the API docs. So cards is one of those three that simply does not have an API. It's really easy to integrate. So there's not much options associated with it. So if we scroll down, it'll show us just basic usage of how to use this particular very simple component right here. So I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna go back to my code editor and I have my first project open here. So we're gonna go to source, we'll go to pages and we'll go to home.html. And I'm just gonna paste in what that mentioned here. And of course the card title, we can customize to whatever we want. And then also I'm gonna copy and paste from the written tutorial, this sentence right here. So we'll save it and there we go. Very, very simple to integrate this type of component. 
So the same sort of thing aligns up with the grid in the button component. So what about the other 17 template type components? Well, let's take a look at, for instance, the button component here in the Ionic documentation. So we have buttons and you can see for more information, check out the API docs. Let's go ahead and click on that. And you'll notice if we come down, we have what are called input properties for this particular component. So we have an attribute and a type and then details, which is just gives us a basic description of what this type of input property does if we add it to our button component. So just as an example, let's go back to our code editor and we'll add a button right just at the bottom of the ion card content and we'll put in button and notice in order to reference it, this is called ion button. So we put in ion dash button and let's add in a few of those properties. So one of such property was coming down here. We have block. So it's a Boolean value, which is true or false. And this is a button that fills its parent container with a border radius. All right, so let's add that. Block equals true. And then let's go ahead and we'll give it just default. We'll save it and we'll go back to our browser. And we can see it fills it all the way. And we know this works because if we were to remove this, save it and go back, it doesn't. So let's go ahead and we'll redo that. And of course you can add multiple input properties. So let's go ahead real quickly. I was gonna to refer to it, but I do have it offside. So there's one called outline equals true and color equals danger. Save it and go back. And there we go. We can very quickly customize these components based on the input properties that we see in the API documentation. So you can see we added color and it can specify primary, secondary, or danger, and all these others here. Okay, now let's go back to the main docs and let's take a look at a, another template component and that is called the fab, which is floating action buttons. Now, it, of course, it gives you an example of how these are used and how you can integrate them. Let's go to the API docs for this. And this one, this time, adds something called attributes. Now, these are simply HTML attributes that you can add to the HTML element itself, and they don't accept any values such as true or false. We simply add many for it to work. So let's go ahead and experiment with that one real quick. And we'll go ahead and add, or change rather, instead of add, ion-button to ion-fab. And in here, let's just a, put a simple plus sign. Let's save this. And we can see this is it by default without adding any type of attributes. You can see at the size it's currently at. And then if we add the mini attribute, save it, we can see it's considerably smaller. And that's how easy it is to add attributes based on the API docs, which the several of the components, the, the template components, and also the uh, dynamic components do have attributes that you can add like this. Okay, let's take a look at one more component that's a part of this section that we're referring to as template components, and that is the select. So let me go back real quick take a look at components, go down to select, and click on the API docs right here. Now if we scroll down, we'll see we have another section called instance members. Now some of the components also have this. So what is this and how exactly do we use this? Well, the select dropdown when clicked brings up what's called the select interface. And this open method here allows us to open that 
without having to click on the actual select button. And we can make it open up through any other means through our code if we wish, like say for example, on a click event on a different button. So just to demonstrate how this would work and how you would implement this instance member, let's go back to our HTML and I'm going to completely remove everything and I'm going to paste in the example code from the tutorial, the written tutorial that I'm following along with uh, on this tutorial. So we have what's happening here, just uh, all very simple stuff. We have just, you can not pay attention to these, it has nothing to do with what we're doing. Uh, same thing with, with the label. We have right here, ion select, and then we're using two-way data binding for the ng model, toppings, multiple true, and then also we have this right here, tops, and that allows us to reference this element here by a button on a click event that's going to open up a method called open it, and we're passing tops to it. So what we want to happen is, let's go ahead and save this real quick. We'll go back to our lab. When we click this, and by the way, it doesn't work because we don't have that method defined currently, we want this to happen. And we would use the open instance method, or member rather. So let's go ahead back to our code. Let's go to our home TS file. And just inside here, we'll create open it. We'll pass along tops to it. And we'll put tops.open. And that is the instance me member that we saw in the API documentation. Let's go back, click it, and there we go. Now finally, on this Ionic API doc page for our select component, we also have, instead of just input properties, which we already covered, we have something called output events. So this allows us to use event binding, such as an onClick, on an output event to call a method. So for instance, let's take a look at ion cancel. Uh, let's say we wanted something to happen when a user clicks cancel uh, or they select anywhere outside of that select interface. So if we click open, you know, if we wanna capture what happens after somebody clicks cancel or clicks outside of it, then Let's maybe perhaps print something to the console. All right, so going back, it's called ion cancel. Let's go back to our HTML. We'll go ahead and right here inside of the ion select, put in ion cancel with parentheses, which is event binding equals, we'll call a method called cancel. We'll save it. We'll create it cancel and we'll say console log canceled. We'll save, go back. Let's go ahead and open up our console. By the way, all that stuff is showing up, has been refreshed. We'll open and then click cancel. And there we go, right there. So that will allow us to do any number of things in our code if somebody happens to click cancel. So now let's take a look at these dynamic components as I'm referring to them. And there's around eight of them. And what makes them unique is the fact that they're accompanied by controllers. And we use those with dependency injection in our component in order to do certain things with those components. So let's take a look at the alert component right here. And first, before we proceed, let's go back to our HTML and let's replace everything we have here with this simple code right here. All we do is have a button, which is ion button, and we have a click event, and it's gonna open up a method called open it. So let's save it, go back, and this is what we have so far. All right, back in the documentation, let's click on the API docs for alerts and you'll see we have alert controller. This is the first thing what we have to import in our component here in Angular 2. So let's go to home TS and going to type in import. This is called alert controller from 
Ionic. Let's save. And then we have to use the dependency injection in our constructor so we can access it. So private alert CTRL for control and alert controller. All right, let's save. Let's go back to the documentation and let's scroll down. You see it has usage to show us how to use this. But more importantly, let's look at, at the instance members because remember a lot of them have this and it's important to be able to know how to read this. So we have an instance member called create and it accepts an argument called ops here. And here's the parameter of options and the type is alert options. Okay, so let's go down here and we'll see that alert options is defined here. And these are all of the properties and the types along with the descriptions that it accepts. So it accepts a title, a subtitle, a message, CSS class if you want to append a CSS class so you can style it yourself, inputs, buttons, etc. So let's go ahead and add title and subtitle to this. So what we'll do, we're going to get rid of this here. Remember this is the method that we're going to be calling when that button's clicked to show up an alert. We'll type in let alert equals this alert CTRL dot create. So remember the instance member was create and this is where we're referencing that. So now we'll open up in parentheses and squiggly braces. Now this is where we put in the properties that are defined from the alert options. So title, my alert, we'll just name it whatever you want. And then also subtitle, my subtitle. All right, there's also another one called buttons and it's an array. So if we come down here, we have inputs, which is an array. And this is an array of inputs for the alert. See input options and the same thing over here for buttons, an array of buttons for the alert. See input button options. Here's the input options for inputs. And then here's the button options, which is mentioned right here. So this is an array and it'll accept all of these properties for the button, a text, a handler, CSS class, and a role. So let's go ahead and add that. Let's go back. So this one, we reference the property name, which is buttons, and then we open it up in brackets and also the squiggly braces, and it accepts a text. Let's make this one okay. And it's an array, so we can have multiple. So we'll separate these by a comma, We'll paste and we'll make this one nope. Let's go ahead and save that. We'll go back. And before this will work, by the way, I forgot one thing at the end here. We have to add alert.present. So we'll go back real quick. We'll open it and there we go. My alert, my subtitle, okay and nope. All right, so I know that was a rather quick crash course with Ionic components, but going forward, whenever you need to implement any of those other components, you should be able to do so with relative ease. All right, so the next lesson is gonna be based around Ionic Native. I'll see you.